Hello, me again. And this program is going to be referred to as How to Reuse Runtime Programmable EEPROMs and Other EEPROM Tricks. And when you hear the term Reuse Runtime Programmable EEPROMs, you ask how and why. Well, the why is pretty simple. Because when you've finished doing the revisions and stuff on a project, say you have a project that takes one kilobyte or whatever firmware and you pretty much roll it down and you got a stable stable firmware build and you know that you're not going to be doing any more revisions to it. It's just at the last stage of putting the final bolts in it, buttoning things up, and calling it quits on the project. You can potentially relieve or displace one reusable EEPROM, an erasable one, with what you normally throw away as junk which is an old salvaged EEPROM out of some other piece of equipment that's already been programmed to a degree stuff and the how derives from the simple fact that most programs do not use the full space available in a memory device and most larger consumer oriented orientated devices use large EEPROMs which leaves often a considerable amount of space unprogrammed in the one time programmable devices and the second part of the how is the fact that most companies and people programming leave the unprogrammed space the default FF or eight ones, the untouched, unprogrammed state. So, and you can always go from a one to zero, but can't go from a zero to a one. So you can still dump your program in the unused space, often several kilobytes. If and there's two ways to do it. If you had a program that doesn't use interrupts and doesn't have to originate at zero you can just see what the first available block of unused space is on the EEPROM that you're going to use for the final build or the final uh, state of the machine when you button everything up and just recompile it to start at that spot the first usable 256 byte or 1 kilobyte memory spot in the old one time programmable EEPROM then burn it to the EEPROM and zero out all the existing memory space in the EEPROM and in other words read your EEPROM chip Paste your code, your compiled code, into the unused space and f blank fill, zero fill, all the existing space. And when you hit program, all the ones and zeros will all be z turned to zero, which remember you can go from one to zero but not zero back. And then your program will be put in the unused space and you can throw your chip in and when you turn it on the microcontroller is just run all the way through the old program spaces no ops no op no op till it gets to your program and then runs it as normal and by doing so you've displaced a more valuable EEPROM an erasable type that you can reuse on some other project and what you would have thrown away can 
it ran its normal continued new existence forever and the final build of the project is just completed and there's a second way to do it if your program has to start at zero originate at zero then you can take find the first available 256 byte 512 1k or 2k or 4k memory block that's available in the EEPROM and burn your pro uh, compile your program as normal and burn it to that spot and then bend a couple address pins down for the appropriate address pins and jumper them to B plus or VCC which basically transfers your memory block for up in the S address range down to the root zero zero so your program can operate as normal using the uh, standard interrupt routines and stuff and bada bing bada boom throw this sucker in and you've displaced a more valuable EEPROM which can be reprogrammed and reused on other projects all right, got done reusing runtime programmables here. And in general, I found most of the runtime programmables that I've pulled, about two thirds of them, still have usable address space on them. All these here are free space. Well, all the ones that doesn't have any free space I've taken and disposed of. While well, some programmers want to be cantankerous and they zero out all the unused space, you'll find those once in a while. But usually, you leave them the unprogrammed FF. Sometimes you don't even have to do any of that fun stuff because some of these they got, like this one here, doesn't even have any programming at the origin of zero zero. The actual program starts almost halfway through the chip. So to re reuse this one, I wouldn't even have to do any strange hackery or anything like that, like bending pins down and resoldering them. All I gotta do is program it at zero zero and use several K or almost up to. 400k is available on this chip at the 00, zero hex origin so this one's almost a free complete free ride here no work at all well now back to normal erasable EEPROMs and tricks you can do with those kind of in the same vein as the one time programmables if you have a project that you know is going to take several revisions of firmware to try to sort sort out and you don't want to do the EEPROM shuffle burning, testing, then throwing in the UV eraser, then burning again and testing, you want to save some wear and tear on the chips. Stuff, there's a way to do it. That might not seem straightforward at first. That's pretty quick and clever. And will make debugging a heck of a lot easier. And that way is if your program, because most EEPROMs are going to be like 256K, 512, or whatever. While well, most programs you're going to be which equates to 16 or 32 kilobyte in most programs you're going to be burning and testing on embedded stuff is going to be like 1 kilobyte, 2 kilobyte, 3 or 4 so potentially for 32 kilobyte chip you could 
reprogram these. Ah, uh, we got a couple of pins missing. That one don't look good. But uh, you could potentially reburn these two, four, eight, sixteen times before you have to erase them again. And that's done via a very simple process. Take and put a little jumper header by where your EEPROM is going to be located on your project board and use that to jumper your high address lines to 5 volts or to ground to effectively page your EEPROM you can shift it in 2k by uh, 2 kilobyte, 4 kilobyte, or 8 kilobyte increments depending on how you wire it to your upper address lines. And so when you program your chip, first revision goes at zero with all the jumpers jumpering the upper addresses to ground. And if that revision, once you figure out what's going on with that, then Put your chip back in the burner and just take and your next revision just offset it by two kilobytes four kilobytes eight kilobytes whatever up and reburn it leaving the original revision in place at zero then the next revision in place at two kilobyte offset next and revision at four kilobyte then the 6 kilobyte and 8 kilobyte. And as you go through, all you have to do is shift the jumpers to go between your first revision, your second revision, your third revision by just paging the ROM that the microcontroller sees. And it offers an excellent aid in debugging because all you have to do if something changed between two of the revisions, all you have to do is shift the jumper back to the previous revision, a uh, previous page in ROM, and restart your project. And you're instantly back at your previous revision up to two, four, eight, or more revisions back. You can go all in one chip. And then once you get done reprogramming it 2, 4, 8, 16 times, and all the space is full, go to your next chip, set that one back to be erased, thereby saving up to 16 erase cycles for debugging and allowing you the aid in debugging of being able to jump between different revisions on demand by just shifting jumpers back and forth. So that's a few little EEPROM tricks I've used time to time to make debugging faster, to save wear and tear on your equipment, and to displace usable EEPROMs with ones that you normally throw away in the final applications and stuff where you ain't gonna have to fidget with it anymore once you put the chip in for the final time so take care take it easy see you later